about family. About family while we take a little bit of a tour <clears throat> through a Japanese highway <laughs> in a Ferrari, nonetheless. I thought this would be fitting. All right, so. Family, family, family. Family and virtual reality. This dawned on me middle of the week while I was having a an absolute blast with my daughter uh, playing VR The Diner Duo, which she lovingly named The Burger Game, uh, which is a game where you don't just make burgers, but that's definitely the main thing. One player is in VR making burgers and, <clears throat> you know, assembling all the pieces to hungry customers who were piling in, doing their whole ordering job. Yeah. Well, whoop, slipped the gear, forgot this only has five. <clears throat> anyway, she was laughing her ass off, uh, properly, like in the, in the cutest way, because, why? Because she was burning intentionally all the burgers for the order and we were sending them out. And it just, it struck me. I thought, you know what? I need to come on here. And I need to just talk about family. The effect it's had on family, what you can do in VR with family. There's so many different channels and avenues to talk about this. So like, let's just talk about it for a while. So first and most obvious thing is enjoying VR with family. Um, what does your immediate family think of VR? Do they like it? Or maybe they not into the whole VR thing? Do they think it's the world's, you know, worst, <laughs> worst enemy? I know there will be families out there who have those. You know, my, my own brother refuses to try VR. And it's certainly been a dent in my heart, you know, being such into, into VR. My parents have both tried, which is nice of them. Seeing as, seeing as they are uh, pretty much anti-gaming. They're not gaming people. Really, really aren't. I always thought it would be nice to actually get in a game like Assetto and uh, be able to connect remotely with my dad. Like, just hang out and drive. Like, I mean, I thought that, that would just, to me, be an ideal way to remotely hang out with my father, who's in a different country. You know? So at the moment, I'm, I'm living in the UK, and he's in Ireland, and he's big into racing. He used to race super bikes. Not race, but he used to drive super bikes, I should say. There were a few times he went on Isle of Man and did a lap. I should really be doing Isle of Man. If I haven't featured it yet in one of these videos, I, I will. It's a, it's, a, it's a great track. Maybe not that well <clears throat> maybe not that well composited. But it's it's good. It's really, really nice. So, look, I wanted to talk about this today. This, this kind of concept of family and how how, how I've felt with it. So, look, <clears throat> I got VR when we were just starting a family. Uh, we, we decided we'd had enough of London. We wanted to move up to Edinburgh and Scotland and um, and actually have kids in a place that wasn't, you know, for a quarter of a million, you could only get a cardboard box by the Thames, you know. <clears throat> so actually have a house, actually have a life with uh, with our kids and have a safe place for them to grow up. So that, that was our decision. And then, lo and behold, news of the Oculus Rift DK2 lands, and, you know, well, Karen, my wife, is heavily pregnant with Jade, our first daughter. Boom. Pre-order. Opens. And within half an hour, I am now the proud owner of a receipt slip saying, you have just paid a feck ton of money for a piece of technology that, that will probably not work well. It really felt like I was backing a Kickstarter even though I didn't back the original DK1 Kickstarter, and this was the second edition headset. I'd already tried the DK1 <clears throat> with a guy called Chaus, who I met on the Overclockers forum who was advertising in London, and said, hey, come over to my place in Angel, and I'll show you VR. So I gotta always shout out to Chaus, because without him and his original demo and introduction, I would have never chosen this path, or at least I wouldn't have chosen it that early. So the accessibility to trying out the headset uh, and getting infatuated with it, like, instantly. <clears throat> Realizing that it was going to just totally change the way that we as humans interact with one another. Uh, was a huge, uh, was a huge kind of game changer to my life. So, thanks to Chaus. Chaus is a, a 3D artist, level designer. Um, he's worked on several games, some early VR games. Uh, there was a zombie game that he worked on. But, I am getting distracted from my main point. 
family. So, my immediate family, daughter Jade, son Denver, wife Karen, and um, I, in the early days, like, Karen and I would swap headsets and we'd be playing on the stream and we'd be playing a lot. Like, we got so many good laughs. I Expect You to Die was great. I mean, and not just the VR co-op games, but just watching someone else, you know? There's, there's, there's... I wouldn't even go so far as to say vicarious, but there's an enjoyment factor when you're watching someone else play. It's so fantastic. It's like really good to just watch someone else. Sometimes I even appreciate watching more than I do playing. I was watching Karen play Beat Saber just last week, and she beat Angel Voices on the first on the first attempt after six goes. On the first attempt. And it was just great to see her work through it on hard and, and, and finally beat the game. And then I, I showed her how the tempo looked like an, an expert, because that's how I could beat it. <clears throat> and feck it if I could, you know, expert plus, the patch just landed with that, and my god. They really want to kill us, I think, with that. But, like, that's the whole thing I'm talking about. Like, when, when you take someone who you absolutely love, you know them to the bones. You really know them inside and out as a human. And then you, you expose them to something that totally just puts them on a different spin. It's like spinning a, t a, a toy top. Spinning spinning this tangent. It, it's so, so cool to see what spins out of them. Like, I remember Cyberspace. Cyberspace was a DK2 demo where you were on this, like, big rocking ship, if you want to call it that. Like an amusement park ride, where at the end, you 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 could be jettisoned to your death and fall to the pavement and you hear a big crunch and you're lying in a pool of your own blood but until then you're just you're just swinging back and forth and it's like so fast and and i put karen in this when shortly after jade had been born our first our, our first uh our firstborn and she screamed so loud i thought the neighbors were gonna call the cops i really did i thought that there was definitely I mean, the, the blood-curdling scream that came out of her was, like, literally as, as loud as I've ever heard it. And she was so nervous that she'd wake the baby and all this kind of stuff. Jade slept through it. And uh, power to her. She's such She's been such a wonderful uh, little girl for us. Uh, I mean, you, you, you don't know what you're going to get when you get kids, right? And you might get... You might raise hell demons. And uh, if that's the case, so be it. But our kids, we've been really, really lucky. You know, no health complications, no major damage after the pregnancies and all that. So anyway, like for me, it's really weird. But like my time as a father has gone in parallel with my time as a dad. <clears throat> so like me starting up the show and streaming and, and Karen looking after the kids or vice versa. Us working on things together for the show, talking about it. It's just been so interleaving that to me, actually, VR is you can't uncouple it. You can't uncouple it from that family vibe, that feeling like, oh, we're going on a first date. So I love, like, I love VR for that, and that's my immediate, immediate family, the family that I built, that we made together, our kids, you know. And my kids love, my kids are loving VR. Like they play with the Oculus Go, they'll play with uh, PSVR, always supervised, and that's for my safety, not theirs, because uh, you know, <laughs> uh, I don't want to go to jail because they broke my headset. Um, that's a joke, but uh, you know you you don't want to you don't want to leave kids unattended with uh, expensive technology anyway. I always thought it was ridiculous when people were giving their their like brand new Gen One iPhone to a five year old, and I'm like, what what do you expect is going to happen if if he throw if he or she throws it against the wall like it's broken? You're gonna have to buy a new one, and that's on you. Uh, and I'm not a guy who uses cases or anything, but like literally, like I mean, do you want to take that risk? Are you okay with? What happens if it breaks? So, and hey, hey, I've got a good, I've got a good family-related uh, segue here. So the family-related segue is this: bought my Vive because Oculus had said, "Hey, we're gonna send you a riff for all the great things you've been doing about VR, promoting it, and all that." I was one of the really early cats involved in the game and showing it off, and we were actually pretty popular in the early days. Uh, that's cooled off since, but still have my 14,000 followers on Twitch, which I'm, I'm very proud of. That's very hard to do when you're a VR specialist and that's pretty much all you do. Um, that was a hard... It wasn't just hard. It was like you had to think about, like, how do I entertain people? How do I show them this? How do I uh, fix a totally broken stream, you know, half the nights that we're playing? <clears throat> but I don't want to get too distracted from my story. So anyway, Oculus are like, hey, we'll send you a rift. 
Uh, they didn't in the end. Uh, but they said, well, we'll send you a rift. So I decided when the Vive news came, they're like, oh, Vive's coming out in, in a similar time frame. I was like, well, I can now I can afford the Vive. And, you know, I've got kids and all that kind of thing. So uh, I was like, great, I can I can afford the Vive. So I, I pre-ordered the Vive. And then I was still waiting for Oculus to come through. And by the way, this is standard Oculus affair. For years, they've been this way where they're like, oh, we'll get you something. And then they don't, and they don't, and they don't. And it's just been, like, I, I really like Oculus. And the people I know directly from Oculus, I like them a lot. But in terms of time frame and uh, loopholes and just like, it's like any major company. And I'm sure it's the Facebook effect, but, you know. It's like many major company, just trying to get your act together when you've got so many people, sorry, so few human resources and, and so many people to interface with. It's hard to make them feel like a valued individual. And I recognize that. So look, I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't hold a grudge. Uh, but those early days were, they were really disappointing for me because I was like, oh shit, what am I going to do now? I can't afford both headsets. But in the end, um, actually the stream pulled through and, and they... Uh, and it's, it's not because I was asking, they just were donating over time, and I was I managed to get enough cash together to get the Rift as well. So I got the Rift and the Vive, and that was kind of my early days. And, um, and then the Vive, my treasured new VR headset, some months into it, my two-year-old daughter was sitting in my room on a slatted chair. Underneath it, the Vive wands were perched, charging, trickle charging. And then another kind of trickle came down. A shower, a golden shower on the Vive controllers. One only got a little bit of splash damage, and the other one was inundated. I was so nervous about this, my knee-jerk reaction was to run the now urine covered Vive controller to a sink and re give it a good rinse out. Give it a good rinse out right around that trackpad. Just rinse it out. Rinse it right out. Make sure you got all that urine out. Got to make sure that urine's out. Got to give it a good washing. Give it a good old washing, Zim. Give it a wash. And then let it dry. And let it dry out. A week went by. I tried powering it on. Nothing. Another week. Nothing. I scrolled through the Vive website. What would two controllers cost me? 260 pounds! That's like $300 for two controllers. Are you kidding me? One, one accident by my daughter and me, admittedly, with the sink. It's probably my fault more than hers. And I got a shell at 260 quid. That's half the price of a brand new headset at that time. Feck that. I did it. I had to pay for two new controllers. So there's the effect of family on you. Effect's sake. Jade, I hope in the future you listen to this. And I hope you're smiling. Because it'll be a memory in my mind forever. How you... You peed on my Vive controller. But it's okay. My dad, back in his day, he loved his record player. And he had a diamond tip record player. And I snapped that right off. I was playing. And then I was turning on and off his... Like, his, his Yamaha uh, stereo system. On, off, on, off. I like the click of the button. Oh! Jay, do you no longer have a dad? I crashed. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So these stories, these stories, what are you going to do? Anyway, so that was that. That was that. That was that. one of the uh, side shoots of having a family. So anyway, kids love VR. Like, I feel like it enriches our experience. And when it's a cold, dreary day outside and nobody wants to go anywhere, we can still go somewhere. You know, we can go check out we can go check out Skyrim together. My daughter still begs me. She's like, Daddy, can you play Skyrim? She like loves the fact that I'm, you know, riding a horse and I've got magic shooting out of my hands and you know, we take on these big scary monsters. She's always she's always really liked the kind of exciting adrenaline stuff, which I know means she'll probably be with some tattooed bald guy when she's a teenager. Hopefully she'll pass through that phase and meet a more mature tattooed bald guy and settle down and have some kids. I don't know. She's allowed to do whatever she wants, whatever she feels like. That's her life, not mine. Um, and, and I do like to joke because we all, you know, when you got a teenage daughter, you know you're gonna have some tough times ahead. Whatever. Anyway, she doesn't. She she's not going to actually be able to experience VR in the same way I did. I am so fucking lucky. Like I don't think you realize how lucky I feel. 
Like to be there in the position where you've been through all the gaming, you understand what games are all about. It's only a plus or minus 20 year, you know, segment one way or the other, you know? I'm in my early 30s and and it's it's like that's the perfect, that you are ripe. You are ripe and young enough to appreciate this dawn of the new era of like being in the experience, traveling to a place, you know, exploring a world together in multiplayer. Like, all that kind of stuff. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. Amazing! You've gone from one universe to as many as you want. It's the one to X. Anyway, so I share all this stuff with my family. I share it with my wife, right? And it, I don't mean I share it with my wife in the way that here's my token wife who plays the, you know, the girlfriend role when we're playing Mario or whatever. It's not like that. She's a total gamer. Like, we used to play, we used to binge, like, Left 4 Dead, pulling expert, you know, hitting every expert level and getting the unlocks. Like, we were almost achievement hunters in that day, before we had kids. And, you know, our first date was Diablo. Uh, it was never going to work. It was, uh, it was trying to get Diablo 2 working across a PC and a Mac on Wi-Fi. That was never going to work, but it made a good excuse for a date. Anyway, so the family I built infatuated with VR, connected better by it, experiencing highs, so highs, brightest of highs together. And what I mean by that is like, you just, when they're laughing and smiling and you know, you're falling off the couch in tears and it's just like, how, like for the people, for the developers who've made this content that allows me to connect with this other human being who just happens to be my genetics, to that level, thank you. Like, thank you, thank you for putting the hours in, for caring, and and for not shying away when someone told you that's not a good idea. Or for not shying away when you knew it wasn't gonna be for money that you were developing. Uh, you knew it wasn't gonna be for fame. You just did it because you wanted to do it. You had your own reason. You had a passion, or you had an idea that just wouldn't leave your head. Thank you for that. You know, now let's talk about extended family. So my immediate family, right? My brother I talked about, he doesn't want to touch it. He's kind of the anti-gamer now. He used to be a gamer with me. We'd, we'd go to Counter-Strike lands together, Quake, Unreal Tournament, Day of Defeat, all this kind of stuff. And then he found like bodybuilding and stuff and he just turned, totally switched off gaming and just went, he went down the Iron Man route, almost killed himself on a bicycle. And, and, and now he's just a cool dude. He's just a cool dude who's my brother. I have loads of respect for him. I just wish he wouldn't be so fearful of getting sucked back into that thing. But then again, for an alcoholic, right, you would say, maybe it's not a good idea to have a drink. So maybe he's self-limiting. Or he's just no longer interested. They're cool. Still hurts. But it's cool. My parents have tried it. Uh, put my dad into a Seto. And he still thought that the uh, steering wheel and the feel of the car wasn't right. And I can understand that. It's not perfect. It's not going to be exactly like a car. But, I mean, he could see the application for it, particularly in business. And straight away, as we both trade on the stock market, he's like, what companies are publicly listed? Because I need to go trade in this. And so once he'd seen it, he saw where it was going. You know, having been a draftsman, um, he could see the application for architecture and a few other things. In addition to entertainment. My mom, she tried it. She knows it. She supported us. You know, she's a good mom. Um... But I have to say, like, it would be great, as I said, like, one of my wishes would be that I could get my dad into a VR setup. Like, as he becomes more, or I said less capable, just moving around and stuff. Like, I mean, he sold his motorcycles because his, his, his hips couldn't handle it anymore and stuff like that. Like, once you get to a certain stage, your body's telling you you can't do that thing anymore. And I just don't know if, if he's ever going to be in a position where he realizes he can unlock the ability to recapture and captivate some of those moments and enjoy that with his son who is far away and doesn't get enough time with him as it is. Like if we could set him up and actually we could do that, dogfight in the air and like War Thunder or play some Assetto Corsa together. I know there's a lot of great stories out there and please tell me if you have one. You know, there's a lot of great stories out there of, of different, uh, uh, of companionship in VR. Whether it's mother, daughter, father, son, you know, whoever it is, couples staying together at a long distance on an Oculus Go playing Othello from a thousand miles apart because they're in university. <clears throat> I mean, it's amazing. 
it doesn't just that's that's the aspect of VR that I think is most hidden, is the connect to the connecting fabric that it re it just brings. It just brings this connecting fabric and ties you and binds you together, and it gives you something to celebrate at the same time. And I feel so impassionate about this. And then let and then there's the people who watch. There is your third or fourth or whatever layer you want to call that family, the people who watch you and enjoy this stuff. There's the people in the room physically with you, the people at a convention where you try it, uh, the people if you're a content creator who watch your videos, watch you streaming live, interact with you, <clears throat> wish you well, wish you poorly. <laughs> I've had plenty of people who just want me to die in games because they're like, it's so much fun to watch you shriek and, and just <laughs> get mutilated in uh, Dread Halls or Resident Evil or all that kind of stuff. That's another kind of family. It is an absolute kind of family. They, you care about them, they care about you, and you get to <coughs> connect over something that feels real. You know? And it is real. What's a memory, right? What you see around you, what you smell, or taste. I was trying to do Morpheus, that was not a Morpheus accent. <laughs> what you see, or smell, or taste. Welcome to Kazakhstan. <laughs> I am Morpheus I. I am Kazakhstani brother of Morphe. Okay, what am I doing? Anyway, it's back on track here now. So, look, 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 look. This is what I'm saying. If you haven't already realized it, if you haven't already experienced it, the depth of emotional connecting fabric that VR allows, it doesn't just allow, it's like a catalyst. It's like a catalyst and it, it draws you closer together and you experience these things together and you feel like you're when you're watching someone else all your mirror neurons are going off and you're see you're you're feeling like you're there you're the one in the seat you're the one with the bomb ticking you know you're the one with the T-Rex chasing you at your ankles it's amazing what a technology and it's not just that i love the technology it's like you build a family through it and i mentioned it before but i got to say it again the fact that you don't like today, and this might change, and I think it will change. Today you don't you don't see the other person. If I'm driving or racing, I don't see the actual person sitting in their car, but I can still be sitting on Discord and talking to them and and connecting with them and and establishing a friendship with somebody who, you know, and it feels like we went out for an actual drive. Like we went and we raced around Glencoe in Scotland for three hours. We just hung out and just drove around, you know? And we're just talking and we're just driving. And we're just hanging out. And that's it. And it's like, that person in that place, far away from me, I never would have met them. I never would have spent those hours. I never would have connected with them or understood their normal in their life. So like, that's it. That kind of family environment, to me, is, so incredibly important. It's just so important. And uh, it's a feature that I think a lot of people don't realize exists in VR. Thanks for listening to me again, guys. Um, I really appreciate that. And I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Sunday Drive. We will see you again for the next one uh, next time. Thanks again.